<laughs> bravo, bravo indeed. Oh, no, please, don't stop on my account. I was rather enjoying myself. Your voice is nothing like I've heard in centuries. <laughs> as soft and as rich as the deepening twilight. Forgive you for what? Didn't I just say I was enjoying myself? What could you possibly have done to offend me? What fool could mistake your voice for noise? Clearly they have no taste. Besides, even if the rules do say that workers should be silent, am I not the prince? The lord of the abyss himself. The infernal mountains would, themselves would crumble if I told them to. So if I may say, sing, then you shall. In fact, I would say it is a crime for anyone to silence you. I haven't seen you around, though, before. Surely I would have remembered what a lovely little thing like you. When did you... Ah, that's right. Asphodar told me we'd got a new shipment the other day. You must be one of the new of them. Who are you? What's your name? <laughs> Such a timid little thing. Look at you. Trembling like a flame in the wind. Don't be afraid. I do not intend to harm you. You've done nothing to warrant any kind of punishment let alone one as my harsh as my hellfire. <laughs> or do you think I just go around incinerating workers just for fun? Of course not. That'd be awfully inconvenient to have them keep restocking my staff every other week. Well, it's good to see that you know your place, but I can hardly hear you when you're kneeling like that. Your head is bent so far it's practically touching the ground. S stand up. <laughs> That's right, my little songbird. On your feet, the infernal prince commands it. That's better. Now, all that's left to take that is that chin. And tilt it up to meet my gaze. By Beezlebub's wings, a face quite exquisite as yours. Are you a siren? Then, at least partly one, given your talents. Human? Really? Intriguing. Where did you come from? How did you come to be here, in my palace? I see. So you were stolen from the mortal realm during a raid. And they brought you here. And sold you for... Sold you to the palace. What do you do here? Ah, okay. What if you usually work in the... Kitchens, and what are you doing out here on the terrace? Oh, of course. Hence the scrub brush and the bucket of soapy water. This isn't one of your regular chores, though, then, is it? <laughs> In that case, I suppose I am quite fortunate that I chose this time and place to take a break. <laughs> no, long enough. Three or four songs, perhaps? <laughs> oh, look at those cheeks. Glowing like burning coals. Mm. They're even warm to the touch. Just when I thought you couldn't get any more radiant. You're making it harder and harder for me to keep my composure. Hmm? I heard that little gasp. What's the matter, hon? Does my touch burn you? I've been told it's like a brush with open flame. Or it is perhaps the feel of my obsidian claws. Sharp as razor. <laughs> Don't be afraid, darling. True, they could easily slice through anything, be it metal, rock, or bone. But 
as I've said, you've done nothing to fear from me. And you have nothing to fear from me. Or if it's none of that, then perhaps just by the honor of having the Prince of the Abyss himself caress you. Is that it? <laughs> well, I suppose that depends. What does he wish to ask me? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> you my favorite one of your songs. You really asked me to choose between them. Well, I quite enjoyed the ballad of the dryad and her lover, the water nymph. <laughs> if only he had lived. Faith is an unforgiving harlot, but at least the dryad granted the mercy of staying beside him for all eternity. Becoming a tree on the bank of his pond. If I remember correctly, it was called a weeping willow. Is that right? <laughs> it is beautiful indeed. Your mortal stories are quite different from ours, though. Our abyssal tales are largely about conquest, subjugating the weak and teaching mortals their place. It's refreshing to hear the tear story that isn't about battle or war. However, to answer your question, though, I think my favorite was the one about the maiden and the owl bear. The way she took pity on the poor creature, setting her own fear aside and order to pluck the thorn from its paw. I admit it was somewhat cliche that the creature ended up being a prince in disguise, but even a demon like myself can appreciate a happy ending. Her kindness reminds me of you. <laughs> You're humble. On top of that, everything else. A voice alluring, more alluring than a siren beauty to rival Lilith herself, and a tenderness that is with within stud even the cruelest of blows of fate, and yet you work away in the kitchens. And now, that won't do, will it? <laughs> oh, no, 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 my little bird. Put that brush down. You won't be scrubbing anything else today ever again, in fact. <laughs> you, take this little bird to the east wing. Give them room of their own. Some new clothes, a full access to the baths, and they are to have all the privileges of the harem afforded to them. If anyone dares to argue, let them be flogged. <laughs> That's right, my dear. You are no longer a mere kitchen worker. As of now, you are part of... You're with me. <laughs> Never again will these beautiful hands ever be split and chapped of harsh soap and scrubbing. Instead, you will spend your days reclining on silken couches. You'll be given fresh food, warm baths, prime gardens to walk in. You can even sing to your heart's content without fear. And your only task will be to serve me, however I deem fit. <laughs> yes, rest assured I'll definitely have you sing for me However Your voice is hardly the only thing alluring about you <laughs> My love, your singing is beautiful But so is the rest of you If you continue to let me You may even receive the ultimate honor <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Imagine a mere human, a former kitchen worker, getting to share the bed with Prince Bodimas himself. <laughs> There's that humility once again. <laughs> Please don't ever think yourself unworthy, my dear. My word is law. After all, and I say you are worthy. Even as the, as even the highest nobles of Silceron. What? <laughs> oh, my love. Still, with all that endearing shyness, come on now. 
doing serious things. You wouldn't seriously think about going back to working in the kitchens. That's what I offered you the world. All in an instant. You must be overwhelmed. Their good fortune. Yes, that must be it. Well, I assure you. It's not some sort of cruel trick. It's real. You truly get to be mine. Now run along. Get yourself washed up. Make yourself presentable. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to restrain myself. <laughs> Until next time, my little songbird. Hey guys, Sewer here. If you guys didn't enjoy this audio, you can let me know. Anyway, you think it's fine. If you're listening to this as you're about to fall asleep, though, hope you guys have a great night tonight. And you have a great day tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.